Uh, welcome back to another video. Um, I've come inside. I, I did do all of this video outside and I watched it back and you could hear the neighbours filling their coal bucket and the light was a bit rubbish and I just I actually I didn't do it very well so it's not as if I'm in any great rush to do other things at the moment. We've got plenty of time haven't we? Uh, so I thought I'd, I'd come and do it inside off the banisters again. It was dangling out the window um, from my bedroom tied around my bed so I was a little bit nervous about putting the bed out the window. The banisters seem a bit more solid. Uh, today I'm going to run you through a setup and kind of the use of uh, something we can do to ascend the rope uh, for the for the reason of coaching a relatively novice climber, probably maybe on their first trad climbs, that kind of thing. Uh, but something that also works for uh, photographers, getting some good shots of, of people, whether it's your mates or, or paid work. We've all got loads of bum shots of our mates when we're getting a sneaky photo off the belay and things like that. Um, but even if you're completely out of it, you can get some good shots from ground level, obviously, especially if you're off the side. But there's something pretty cool about being uh, above uh, your climber and getting some nice shots with the, the eyes in it and the concentration, proper like action shots and a, a slightly more unusual angle. So good for photographers as, as well as instructor and guide types. Um, I fixed my rope up to the, the top of the banisters uh, and there's a couple of new bits of kit uh, for this compared to like normal climbing. This, this is really more like almost like rope access stuff rather than climbing stuff. Um, so you might have seen these in, in rope access or, you know, on movies of people going up Everest on fixed ropes and, you know, that all that walking up snowy mountains. Um, this thing uh, is a Petzl hand jammer. I think it's called an Ascension. Uh, it works on ropes from 8 to 13, apparently. That's some pretty chunky stuff and some pretty skinny stuff. I tend to use it on stuff somewhere around 10 millimetres. It's a toothed ascender, okay? grips onto the rope and only moves one way up the rope. You use your thumb on this little catch and it'll click into place and now it won't go down, it will go up, okay? Uh, it's got a little hole at the top. Uh, I put a snap gate in there, that kind of lives with it. You yeah, use a screw gate, no real point doing it up. Uh, the reason being, going up or down, it doesn't really make much difference, but if we are gonna go on a traverse, there is a slim chance of it opening up the teeth like that and, and popping out. So, although I don't really use it on traverses, to be honest, I just put that in because you do move left and right just a you know, little bit rather than full on traverses. So it feels like it's worth having. Um, that's fixed in. The next bit of kit is the kind of the Gucci bit of kit. Now, we all used to use Gree Grease for this job and they kind of seem to work absolutely fine. Um, but they're not really rated for this kind of use. So this is kind of a rope access bit of kit It's called a Petzl rig. It's basically like a gree gree on steroids. It's chunkier, it's heavier, um, it'll, it'll last you longer. Key is it's rated for this kind of job, okay? And it's also, it goes into a locked position. It says lock on there. So it means we can be hands-free. And a gree gree, you can't do that. You know, yes, you can let go and you, you dangle there, but it's not rated for that. Uh, so we need to be careful with things like that, using it in a professional sense. So gree gree, -gree is a, a way of, um, kind of improvising this, but we've got a better kit these days. So I think really if you're setting out to use it, we probably should use a rig or something similar. There's other devices, right? Uh, you just need to have a look into stuff. If you're going to get something other than a rig, check it's suitable for, for what you want it to do. Rope diameters, types of rope, be it low stretch rope or dynamic rope. Um, so check out your kit. It loads up just like a Gree Gree would really. You can see inside it's got something that acts a lot like that, uh, the Gree Gree. You get that the right way around. It's got a little picture of the hand for the braking side and then the other bit goes through there. Clips like that and that's it, done. The nice thing with these is we can load and unload and keep them clipped into our harness. So they're a bit more drop proof, which is a good thing when we're working at height. And that's just gonna clip to my harness and to my b loop screw gate. Okay, uh, I can move up and down with this now and it positions myself uh, and you'll see in a minute I, I can abseil with it as well, I'm not doing it now, I can abseil down with it, pull the handle and away you go, it goes into the locked position, we can let go. We can let go and I do let go, uh, but what I do personally is once I'm off the floor a little bit, I just tie an overhand in, uh, just is it paranoia, I don't know, it just seems like um, a pointless thing not to do, uh, so I just let that dangle. If, if something weird happened and I yarded hard on that, at least I wouldn't go past that knot. Um, 
So yeah, do it or don't do it, but it uh, seems like a good idea. I could just grab onto that and on really easy terrain, sometimes I do that, I just pull myself up, hoof up on that, pull myself up, hoof up on that. Not really getting much assistance though. So what I actually do for the vast majority of times, give myself a bit of slack on that, is, I'm gonna get rid of the knot for just keep it all nice and clear for now. I put this rope up through the jammer in there, doing really nice. So I've now got a Z shape of rope go further and further. I'll just do that once more for clarity. Right? So I can just add so I can just leave that rope up there as well. So I bring myself down. Uh, I could just pull myself back up like this. I do that sometimes if I'm just nipping down a meter or, so, or two. Um, but to reset it again, let's go down a bit more. There we go. So it's got I've got the Z shape. I'm gonna push up with the left hand and then pull down with the right hand and move my hips in as well like that. Thankfully the banisters are pretty strong, I've never tested them before, we're still all right. And then like I said, you move yourself down if you want to. If I'm going far down and I want to take my jammer, then you just bring it with you. Uh, it can be a bit fiddly when you're not used to it, using that thumb. But you, you get used to it pretty quick. And then I can go as far as I need to go with that. All right. Um, so that's pretty simple though. Onto there, flip it in, up through there, done. Okay. It's simple, it can be quite physical, especially when you're not kind of used to it. Um, when you haven't got the technique kind of dialed, the sort of hip thrusts, um, you, you end up pulling quite hard uh, and it can wreck your elbows. This is a, this is a left-handed one, most right people, right-handed people prefer using a left-handed one. You can easily swap hands though uh, to give one elbow a rest. But if you're doing this a lot, day in, day out, it, yeah, it can give you a bit of tendonitis in, in the elbow, especially if it's something you struggle with a, a bit already. So a lot of people put a pulley on there. I quite like the idea, I used to, I, I don't bother anymore, but I used to. One really neat solution, I think it's called a roll clip, is a, is a screw gate carabiner with a, a good size pulley built into the bottom of it. And it's at an angle as well, so the rope doesn't get twisted and, and it just it runs really smoothly. You can absolutely feel the benefit of it. So if you are doing a lot, uh, maybe that's a good investment. I'm not sure how much they cost. Um, just to mention, I think these are like 35-ish quid, 30 quid, 35-ish quid. Uh, the rig is a bit more money, about 110 pounds retail, something like that. You can get them a little bit less if you shop around. Uh, and I'm not sure what that roll clip thing is that I was on about, but it gives you an idea. Um, yeah, your, your elbows will thank you for it, okay. So what can we do with it? Like I said, that's pretty simple to actually move up and down with it. The key is to actually uh, be of some use to that, that fair, fairly novice lead climber. Firstly, just some good chat, yeah? Um, especially in their first one, just keeping them at ease. I feel that's probably the, the most valuable thing. Throughout the period they're with you, you dial that back because the aim is to create independent lead climbers. So you don't want to make them dependent upon you so that when they leave, they're not like, oh, I can't go lead climbing. Uh, Mr. or Mrs. X isn't next to me to give me that moral support. That, that's not what we want. But in those first lead climbs, I think you can have quite an effect on people in a, in a positive way. Other things we can do as they're climbing up, we can chat about gear and stuff. Yeah, they're placing that nut. You can say, oh, what would you give that nut out of five or whatever scoring system you've got? Oh, I'd give that a four. You swing across, yeah, I'd, I'd agree with that. That's, that's mega right. I'd happily sit on that and all that kind of thing. Or um, I'm not quite sure I agree with that. Well, they just try looking up a little bit and they might find that sink a wire that they had a bit of tunnel vision uh, and now they've seen it because you've helped them think about things like that. There's, there's, there's a million things you can chat about in that regard, uh, but you can have some real use. You'd be dangling around. Don't forget to check that the B layers still doing their thing as well. To get someone leading alongside you, it's kind of it's a big call, right? I've got my lanyard on me here. If they fall off, they're falling off, right? I can't magically unclip and clip all in like a, a split second. So you've got to make some real key judgments. Can they place good gear? Have they accepted the risks of lead climbing? Do they understand and do they want to lead climb? That's a, that's a key thing. 
but it's not just them, is it? You've got a, a B layer down there. Can they lead B layer well? Yeah, we, well, not just can they lead B layer, can they do it well? Can they hold a lead full? Because this can happen now. We've all probably slipped off something we shouldn't have slipped off, um, you know, well within our ability. So good judgments have to be made. It doesn't even just stop with them, does it? You've got to judge the route beforehand. Certainly when you're doing your, you're just sort of starting out doing this kind of work, you want to know the routes like super well. Does it work for this client? Has it got the right gear? Is it the right standard? Does it Has it got any weird moves in it? Uh, does it wander around a bit, which is going to make your life harder to fix the rope? So lo loads of decision making to be made. We want to know they can place gear, as I said. So you know, how can we do that? Not on the lead. Well, they've built some belays at ground level. They've um, done some in-series st uh, stuff with you. If you don't know what that means, maybe I'll do a video on it, but it's a way of getting people leading whereby they're not just completely on the sharp end. Um, there's some backup with it. So all these things you would have done before, before coming to lead climbing, this is like a long way down the line. Okay, okay. Um, so our lanyard isn't to catch them if they fall. So what is the lanyard for? Well, it is more for my benefit. Uh, sometimes I'll need to clip into gear or something to do something up here. One thing you'll see, right, is people clip in this into the hand jammer as a bit of a backup. I, I don't personally do it, okay? I do that not under there, like I said, but I don't personally do this. I just don't really like the idea of uh, teeth and some relative shock load on this. So if I did do something silly and went flying down the rope, or I don't know, these just don't fail, so it's not gonna be that. Um, would I put any shock onto there? There's only a certain amount of kilonewtons uh, that can happen before the teeth are gonna strip the rope. I think that's about four, four or five kilonewtons. So it's, it's a lot. I don't really see how that would happen, but I've just got this slight paranoia about it that I don't feel the need to. Um, if you want to do it, that's fine. You know, you can weigh up the pros and cons of these things. If you're doing this kind of work, uh, I say work, but even if you're doing this kind of stuff with a, with a novice mate, you need to be at a, a good experience level to be able to make these decisions yourself. Yeah. So do it or don't do it, it's up to you, I don't. Um, but I, the only time I will clip into the hand jammer for this is if I need to dangle on it as in a static way, because I might need to get, so it'll be literally actually, that'd be an easy way of doing it. I'll pull that because it's an adjustable lanyard. Uh, and then I can maybe uh, move this, uh, take it off or something if I'm clipped into something else. Uh, actually, I just don't. I don't even know. I said that I wouldn't actually take. I'd never really sort of take that off and just be on that. It seems like a, a mad thing to do. Something came out of my head wrong there. Um, but sometimes I do want to unweight this, okay? Because I might need to be taking some gear out. Why would I be taking gear out? That would be a good question. I fix this on top of the crag to my anchors, my two, my three, my four points, however many it might be that you need to have. As soon as I then come over the edge, probably on my rig, abseiling down, as soon as I'm over the edge, I refix this, it's called a re belay, to a point just over the edge with a bit of slack between my new belay and the original one. Might be one bit of gear if it's super solid, it'll often be two bits of gear equalised with a sling and all that. And then I'll clip my rope in with a clove hitch, like I said, just a bit of slack there called a re-belay, that means that the rope isn't going to be bouncing over an edge. Okay, we could use a rope protector, great, but actually what you'll find you do is you swing left and right a bit as you're trying to check bits of gear, get out of the way, go back in, up and down and all that jazz. So it doesn't tend to work quite so well. So without fail, really, I always re-belay once I'm over the edge. And then you might do other re-belays left or right a bit to just redirect the rope, okay, to keep it in the right place, out of their way but still close enough you can get in. So when you're going up next to them, you've got to strip those out. Sometimes you've got to strip them out sort of fairly quick to be out of the way quickly. So I find that being clipping into that sometimes just able, enables me to position myself, unweight the rope a bit and strip those bits and pieces out. Okay. Um, again, something that other people do, I don't really like it, is they can, um, if, the, if the client, the climber, the novice climber, is looking a bit nervous, just going to extend that fully again. They'll clip the climbing rope, the lead rope, into that, so it becomes like a runner. So if they do fall off, then th there's that there. It's going to yard you around uh, and potentially put some weird forces on stuff. Uh, so I don't really like it. 
it might be a last resort. I'm not going to say I've never done it, but it's not something I actually particularly like anymore. Um, so the better option would be to go and put another bit of gear in for them. So if they're really nervous and they don't want to make that move for whatever reason, uh, you can go, oh, well, why don't I put a nut in for you? Bang it in because you can go up a little bit. Put a quick draw in it perhaps as well. You know, they might be able to clip it or maybe you grab their rope and you clip it themselves and that might just be enough to get them to chill out because they'll be on a top rope then, won't they? Um, so that, that would be my preferred option. Uh, so there's a few things you can do other than coaching some sort of physical things. Um, other bits you can do when they place that bit of kit, you could get them to actually have the B layer take in really tight and they sit on it. So you help to build up some confidence, don't you? You can do that at ground level and stuff as well, but it's just nice to do it in that real sense up on up on the route itself. You already know they can be lay well and stuff, and you already know they can place good gear because you've seen it happen, and you're in a position to go, what do you think that gear is? Four or five, great, yep, yeah, go on and sit on it. Okay. It's nice to be alongside doing that. If you're at the bottom saying that, there's always gonna be that bit of your mind going, is that gear any good? Perhaps if you know, know the route really well, it's a bit easier to do, but it's, it's much nicer to be actually right there and having looked and checked it. And just like we've said, I've said already, sort of justifiable decisions sort of based on facts that you've seen already. Okay, so we've got some coaching stuff we can do, right? Think about where you're gonna be positioned. You wanna be kind of next to them, probably, but away a bit so you're not kind of interfering. Perhaps just a little bit below sometimes, I kind of like that because then you're out of their line of sight and they're just kind of getting on with it towards becoming an independent lead climber. Sometimes you'll shoot up ahead to strip out a re or something while they're doing, maybe they're placing a good nut so you can just have a few seconds to do that. Sometimes you'll nip up to take that photo. Yeah, because like I said, you can get some really nice photos from it if you think it's safe to do so. Um, but just keep out of their way and redirect that rope to be out of their way if the route wanders around a little bit. The routes we're going to be doing um, this on with novice climbers are going to be, um, you know, probably slabby, approaching vert perhaps. If they are vert, that's fine. But any more than that, you're going to overhanging terrain. You can't get your feet on so well to do that, the sort of hip thrusts I was on about. So one option we have is to put a foot loop on, uh, the kind of thing that route setters will do, but uh, in an indoor wall, I'm not going to go into that because they, they kind of do have some other differences including second ropes and stuff but what you can do is I just lark to put that on and that becomes a it's gonna move that down a bit to give us a bit of space there we go that becomes a foot loop now so I can stand into that without falling over and I can stand up pull my rig through stand up a bit pull my rig through it's gonna bounce over here a bit stand up pull my rig through so it gives you a quite a lot of assistance actually so if I'm on steeper terrain yeah, a foot loop is super beneficial. Uh, I don't tend to because I'm not really on that terrain with those beginners. And by the time doing like performance coaching, um, probably don't really want to be alongside them quite so much. But sometimes you might, you know, exceptions to every rule. Certainly the photographer types, yeah, you might well be on some steep stuff, some nice steep Spanish sport crag or something, swinging around, getting some ace photos. So a foot loop would be super beneficial there. Um, and then, as I've said, to, to get back down, just abseil down. If it's just a metre or two, just go like that. Hoof back up to get your jammer. If you're going further, take it with you, okay? Just just for anything extra I can think of while I'm, I'm rabbiting on, uh, I've used a low stretch rope here, the black one. Doesn't bounce around so much. I will be bouncing around a lot, so uh, any bounce from the rope is kind of wasted energy. Uh, so it is ideal. What I tend to do is I tend to take a thicker uh, dynamic rope. It'll take a bit of a beating because we've got a jammer on there and stuff. So I'm not going to use my nice nine millimeter joke or whatever. It's going to be a chunky rope. Just gives me a bit of extra flexibility. I can use it for for climbing stuff as well as the rigging side of things. So I don't like to lug around unnecessary stuff that's sort of only one use kind of thing okay uh, so i do tend to use that so like i said it's up to you to check that your kit works with that and you're happy to do that okay if you've got any questions or anything or you know that any of that wasn't clear um feel free to to fire away in the comment section just remember that there's other ways of doing this 
Um, you'll see other slightly different setups and people doing slightly different things. That's for you to decide uh, whether they're safe or not and whether you like them, because you might well do something slightly differently. Remember what I've said, to be doing this kind of thing, you're going to be pretty experienced. So you should be in a position to make quality judgments yourself and decide why you do what you do. That's kind of key. So as I've, I've mentioned, if you're doing this for an assessment for your mountaineering and climbing instructor award or your rock climbing development instructor award, you know, you're going to get some questions on your assessment. Why did you do it that way? Um, and that's up to you to be able to justify it and, and sort of, you know, make me understand that you've got the knowledge to make those decisions. OK. It's, it's an advanced thing to be doing, not not this bit, but the actual coaching thing. You want to have like shed loads of experience to be doing it and you'll you'll get better and better at it the more you do. Obviously, you can practice this setup on your banisters, on a tree, whatever. Um, because the setup, like so, is the easy bit. The tricky bit is actually doing it for real. So, when we are allowed outside, uh, you can get to the crag and do that, and just practice building um, the anchors and, and redirecting, rebeeling, and getting yourself up and down it. Uh, and then you can put some people next to you and, and practice it with you know that relative novice climber. Um, but 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 just make sure you made some real solid decisions and judgments based on things you've seen already. Put yourself in that worst case scenario. I always say this just to highlight it. Imagine you're in court and the judge is saying, Well, why did you let them lead? Uh, if you went, ah, I just felt like it was the right thing to do, that's not so good as saying, Well, actually, they built all these belays uh, and followed me up all these climbs, and then we've done all this stuff in series, and da -da 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 -da, you can sort of list bullet points and evidence it, then you know that puts you in a better position. That's that's what the aim should be. Okay, not to end up in court, to have good decisions. Um, OK, well, hopefully uh, that's been of interest. Uh, do some more videos. Uh, so, you know, press that subscribe button and all that and uh, fire away with any questions. Thanks for watching.